Just a man on a mission, ambition to never fail. Personality electric, he is animated male. Intelligent and wise, calm and often cool. Chris James giving opinions while also speaking the truth. Empathy and compassion. Stephen Michael is here, helping you through your traumas, helping you with your fears. These three forces combine and keep it honest. Turn up the volume, cause this is the application of knowledge. Welcome to the application of knowledge podcast. I am Animated Mel. We have Chris James here with us. And we have Pineapple here with us. <laughs> Shout out to the Pineapple, man. You know, it's a sweet thing. It's so sweet. It may not, it may not even make a noise, you know. Um, Stephen Michael was fighting against um, Majin Buu. And then Majin Buu just transformed him into a pineapple. So, you know... He'll 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 be back once he once we get the Dragon Balls and wish him back, or maybe we beat Majin Buu and we reverse the the situation, you know. But shout out Stephen Michael Man, um, Rip. <laughs> Hope the pineapple is sweet, baby. <laughs> so, Chris James, what's going on in the world that we need to discuss? Because for some apparent reason, <laughs> there are protests happening in i guess new york because of some um some 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 death some some homeless guy has passed away oh he got choked out yeah but he was murdered he didn't. well yeah <laughs> yeah i guess he didn't pass away <laughs> yeah, he, he was murdered and i didn't obviously when something like that pops up i'm not going to be like yo <laughs> right. i want to watch this you know but i watch different podcasts and other stuff and so they bring it up and they talk about it and it made me think like okay this guy is being he's being in the chokehold whatever and there's dozens of people around there's also other people around that's holding this guy down and then there's people that's videotaping it and so but in in the aftermath, there's there's protest because of his death. But I'm thinking I'm thinking of it like this: Why didn't anyone just stop it? Mm-hmm. Like if they if this guy was causing some kind of mayhem, or you know he he may not have it all up there. Yes, you get him restrained, you hold him down, or whatever. But when does it become a point where we just choke someone out to death instead of being like, okay, ease up, ease up. Because if I was in that situa- a situation like that, I would ease up. Or if I was a bystander seeing someone getting choked out, I would be like, yo, chill out, like ease up. Like what is the, I don't understand the, the dichotomy there because on one end, someone's dying, but now y'all holding a protest because of his death, but y'all didn't do anything mm-hmm. to stop it. Yeah. You know, so what are, you, what are your thoughts on that particular, uh, I guess, that type of situation? I mean, I don't know much about it. That You just told me all the information I didn't know. <laughs> so um, I wish I knew more. But basically, there, people have a lot of anger inside them. Yeah. Because whoever, whoever was the one doing the choking, when as soon as that person goes limp, you should realize, oh, they passed out. Yeah, like, like, like that's it. Like, they're not resisting. Like, what? what's wrong with you to where you are just so enraged and you're so angry or you're so out of it or so unaware that after you have, this person's already passed out, you're still holding on to them? Because that's the only way you could kill them because the chokehold is going to make them pass out first. Right. And then once they go limp, then if you continue to apply pressure to their windpipe and stuff like that, they're going to die from you know, lack of oxygen, or you're going to suffocate them or whatever it is. Um, Not to mention, I mean, that takes time. Yeah. You got to hold on for a long time. Yeah, I think they said 15 minutes he was holding. That's insane. That's wild. Like, what, who, what are you, who are you waiting for, for 15 minutes? Um, I don't, I don't know, but the, 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 obviously this whole idea that people will watch something like that happen and record it and just be bystanders and participate in it. We've seen this happening for years. This is just the culmination of, you know, okay, what are the root root problems? Number one, TV. Mm -hmm. We see this, before we actually did this stuff in real life, we saw it on TV. Yeah. Right? Then you've got video games, which really ruined, uh, uh, you know, a generation of children and their ability to 
uh, decipher between reality and video games. And me and you saw that growing up. And then on top of that, everybody's eating McDonald's and, and you know, Taco Bell and, you know, shoot, even the, the canned stuff in the grocery store, everything is toxic. Mm -hmm. So although people wouldn't admit it, everyone's medicated. Yeah. Everybody in America, at least, uh, that eats, even if you just drink the water, you're medicated. Everyone is medicated. So people can't tell what's real, what's not real. They've lost the value and understanding of like life. They don't know the value of life. They don't value their own lives. They don't. So I think we're just seeing the culmination of everything that the powers that be, the power structure, the system has wanted us because this is how you control people. Yeah. And you're seeing it to the point where we're so dysfunctional. We're killing each other for no reason. I don't even know why this dude got killed. Like, and I would love to dig more deep into why he got killed. But I honestly, I just don't want that to see those the, yeah. the, the videos and all that stuff. But ultimately, it was a senseless, it was a senseless death. Mm -hmm. Because if someone is being held to the point where people just stand around and watching him die, then you obviously, but okay, the another thought process, um, I guess this is kind of a conspiracy. Do you think this was planned? Because even though it's in New York and New York has a different type of attitude and a different type of, they always have that attitude of minding their own business or they're not really like super pleasant. But I think that these type of events, they happen. They happen year round, whether it's something that we're aware of versus something that's it's it just happens um, to be put in front of our face. Because what's the last thing that happened? The George Floyd situation where he was choked out by a cop or whatever. And I'm sure these instances, they aren't synonymous with just, OK, this guy was a black dude or a white dude. Because the guy that was, I guess, choked was a black guy. It was a black guy. I guess that's why people were protesting or so. But wait, the guy that got killed or the guy that killed? The guy that got killed was black. Was a black dude. And, and a white I think dude it was a white dude out. that was uh, choking him out or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so what better story than that? Mm -hmm. What better story than a white dude choking out a black dude to get everyone up in arms, to get everyone upset? Mm -hmm. That it's, it's it's literally picture perfect. It's yeah. it's picture perfect to create some kind of storm or some kind of unrest and unease. Right. You know, because once all that stuff happens, then I guess the powers that be can do other things that will start to uh, manipulate the system that we're in. Mm. Because there also was a shooting, I believe in Allen, Texas, I heard in the mall or something like that. And I only know about this because... I seen people on my timeline on Twitter and on Facebook talking about you, uh, Mike Abbott or uh, Pence, wh whoever. They need to do something about the gun laws, and we're in danger here in this country. And I'm just like, this is the same rhetoric. It's the same. It's, it's consistent. Cycle. It's a cycle. Yeah, the cycle is just never ending. And because, like, even we, we were talking, we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Like, what, what do we think about gun control? Like, what are the like, what do you think that how, how do we feel about guns and stuff like that? But now we have people advocating. We need to do something about these guns. We need to do something about the guns. How about we do something about the people? <laughs> how about we do something with uh, about the people and get to the source? Because the guns, yes, they're they they kill, but the guns by themselves don't kill. Well, and then let's let's be honest. OK, you have countries that have tighter gun laws. And people just get stabbed. Yeah. I'll wet you up, boy. Like, it's, it's, people, if people want to kill people, they're going to kill people. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't solve, you don't solve killing by uh, removing a gun. We just saw a dude get choked to death. Like, <laughs> right, right, it, right. It doesn't, <laughs> the only thing you do, you say, okay, well, but they can't mass kill. Okay, but is that what you're trying to stop? The mass killing? Or are you tr trying to stop the killing? Like, not to mention, if we really like, I, this is the part that pisses me off. You have all of this protest about guns, but you don't have any protest about doctors killing people. And an, 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 I, I, the, the rate at which doctors kill people 
It's kill. It far surpasses anything. Yeah. yeah. Any and everything you could combine war and and guns and everything. And doctors are like, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> you die, you die. <laughs> and and it's like and be, and. Obviously, I'm not saying the doctors know that they're killing people. Right, right. Or, you know what I'm saying? I get it. Like, if people don't, we don't realize it. But who, that does that make it better? Is it okay? Because people, like. It's because they trust doctors. If you get pulled over by a police officer and you broke a law, you can't say, oh, I didn't know. Like, we know, we know that in other systems. We know in other systems you can't, oh, I didn't know. It doesn't matter. Like, you're still held responsible for your actions, whether you knew or not. So, how is it that arguably doctors are killing people at a higher rate than literally anything else? But we're, t- we're arguing about gun control. It's like, what's what's the agenda here? Are we worried about are we worried about how many people are dying and we're trying to fix this problem of people dying? Are we just simply worried about guns because of how guns kill people? Like, I mean, they don't I don't think they care. I mean, it's obvious they don't care because if they care, they will actively do something that'll help people mentally. And doctors, I don't think they'll ever be in a position where they get persecuted to the extent that random people do when guns and weapons are involved. I mean, you could, we could probably look at the statistics of how many people are dying at the hands of doctors or in the medical field versus how many people are getting killed by guns. I can almost guarantee that the medical field or doctors or anything revolving around that, it will be substantially higher than the deaths that we commonly hear about that involves guns. Now, do I think, I, me personally, I don't like guns. I don't like guns, but I also don't think that it's, it's necessary to, to enforce laws that will take guns away from the people. Because obviously the, the government is going to be the ones that's going to be in control of the guns. So, hey, what, what are we going to do? Take the guns away from the people, give them to the government, say, hey, government, I trust you. I know you got my best interest. You know, like, why wouldn't we trust the government or the people, the powers that be with the guns and have us armless or gunless or without be, being able to defend ourselves? So the I'm not going to give in to the. The, the narrative that's being pushed out there, because while this man dying and, you know, a mall getting shot up and people getting killed, while these things that happen are uh, are sad and th- I, I would never want that to happen. Ultimately, we need to we need to push a better narrative because all this is going to do is keep us in this endless cycle. It's going to keep us in this endless cycle. Let's be upset. Let's protest. Let's do this. What protests have actually made a big change? I don't know. Zero. But that's the like that's the playbook. First of all, I'm so confused. What are we? What are they protesting? I don't know. What, what like it's, it, it wasn't a cop that killed this dude. It was just a one of them. It was one of them supposedly. Like like what could you possibly be protesting? We need more. Uh, <laughs> we need uh, more gun control. Ho- ho- homeless people, homeless people need to be looked after. Like, what are you protesting? Protest was held in Brooklyn evening over the death of Jordan Neely with demonstrators calling for charges to be filed against the man who put him in a deadly chokehold. Isn't that automatic when you murder someone? What do you mean calling? Are they? Is he not being charged for murder? I think what happened is that he. After the murder, the guy who who killed him, he he went into the police station, and they questioned him or whatever, and then they let him go. And what? Yeah, they 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 questioned him and they let him go. And let's see, homeless. He was a homeless man. Neely, a thirty year old homeless man, was killed on a Manhattan subway train on Monday. The subway rider put Neely in a chokehold after Neely boarded the train and started acting erratically, according to a witness in police. He died from a chokehold, according to the city's medical examiner, who ruled the death a homicide. Okay, and what's a homicide? Murder. 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 So they say the the investigation is still ongoing. You know, so the Manhattan District Attorney is also investigating whether to bring charges. 
There's no this is the this is the insanity of this this system. And this is why you're probably right. This is probably uh, propaganda, because at the end of the day, any nor in any normal situation, that person, the person who killed the other person would be in jail. Yeah. When he goes in to, to like uh, tell the police what happened, they arrest him because he it, unless he just blatantly lied. You know what I'm saying? Unless he just blatantly just lied and was like, oh, the goo, he was fighting me and I was fending for my life the whole time. And you know what I mean? Unless he just blatantly lied, oh, you're getting arrested. Yeah. Like that's the automatic thing to do. So I think that I think that you're on the right track with that. And I'm so sick of people talking about like conspiracy theories and all of this stuff. It's like, bro, at what point are y'all gonna realize that the CIA developed this whole terminology? And push that on you guys so that when people use critical thinking skills, because that's all this is, it doesn't take a, a genius to figure out that you're being manipulated. Yeah. But when you use just normal critical thinking skills, now you're a conspiracy theorist. I think that people hear conspiracy and they immediately start thinking like, oh, this person must be crazy. But a lot of, the, you know, it's wild. A lot of conspiracy theories that have that have, a lot of conspiracy theories that have been said have come to pass. A lot of them, you know. But it's being blinded. People, people's ideas of what a conspiracy theory is being shaped. Like, it's no, it's reality. Think these things are happening, and that that goes to your other point that a lot of people who are eating these you know these fast food meals and you know they have all these these medicines and all these these toxins within their body they can't see anything that's outside of what's being told to them mm -hmm. they can't do this thinking for themselves so they allow other people to give them that answer and that becomes their reality and so if you go against whatever that thought is that's being pushed to them they're going to look at you like you crazy you don't believe that da, da, da. you know so at this point like it's sad, but I'm just I'm not gonna invest my energy into it. Like I'm 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 not emotionally <laughs> going to put myself out there, you know. So if anyone out there, you know, have has any more clarification on it, because I don't want to dive super deep into it, because I'm sure that video is gonna show up, and I, I do not want to see it at all. But there needs to be some clarification. But also, ultimately. Just look at the propaganda machine. Look yeah. at the machine. Look at the messages it's pushing out there. And just think for yourself, man. Think for yourself. Because this is a continued narrative. It's a, it's a loop. It's, it's go, literally Go back a loop. 10 years and the loop, had, it's just completing its process and starting back over. Um, you know, we had the, we had the shooting in, in Florida at the gay club. Of course, they tied that into the gay agenda, I'm sure. You know what I mean? And, and it's just like... At, at some point, y'all have to. At some point, you're going to have to pick up on this. But um, there is a book called "Dumbing Us Down" by John Taylor Gatto. I think his last name is. Is that about school? Yes, yeah, about schooling. It's about the the compulsory schooling system. I read that book, and it's it basically talks about how there's seven there's seven things that were taught in school, and none of them have anything to do with the betterment of. The, ch the child's education or society as a whole. It's about making sure that you're putting out individuals who can go into these these facilities and work and be, be employees and be, you know, manipulated and controlled. And it was written by a, a school teacher yeah. who who was um, he, he got several awards for for being like this great teacher. Uh, and he was out of New York. Mm -hmm. He was out of New York. So. You can't even say, like, this is someone who knows exactly what they're talking about. And the crazy thing about it is I actually picked up on this when I was a child. Many of us did. Wow. I didn't. You, I, I was completely like, oh, oh. But whatever didn't resonate with me, I didn't go you towards. Didn't, you probably just didn't dive into it, but I know you picked up on it. I know you did. It might have not have been, like, a, a thought. But, like, I used to think about this stuff because we all questioned our teacher. What are we going to do with this when we grow up? Like, how is this going to help us? I would question my teachers all the time and they wouldn't have an answer. And uh, like and I stopped liking school after about first grade, second grade. I stopped liking school because by that time, all anything that we did that was creative and, and, and like allowed us to use critical thinking, it was all stripped away that, at that early. 
So um, I'm very much so against the school system. Yeah. Like I love education, but the school system is not for us. And so what we're seeing now, because people don't realize the school system is new. Yeah, it's new. It started like the 1900s earlier, like the it, 1920s or whatever. And yeah. It was created to do exactly what you're talking it's, about. It's created. It, it's, so this is not this is not when, when you look at the whole of human history, we never were going to schools, you know, and if people went to school, it was for a specific thing. Why did they take like vocational training out of school? Right. Because when school was very first set up, you could be a mechanic, you could be a plumber, you could be an electrician, you could go, you could say, okay, I'm going to do six years, I'm going to go specifically to learn this trade. And then that empowered you, you know what I'm saying? Now we're going to school and we're learning nothing. A lot of the stuff we learn now is false narratives. It's not even real history. It's fake. It's made up. It's based in opinion a lot of times as well and from someone else's perspective on what they want you to learn and what they what they feel you should know. I mean, I think also going to school, it stifles – this isn't necessarily for everyone, but it stifles your growth because people think that when you're in school, this is the only time that you should be learning, <laughs> you know. Mm, good point. And because, hey, you have a teacher, you have a curriculum, you have these books and all that, and – but you don't think that, okay, I should learn more outside of whatever this system is telling me I should learn. Because I can honestly say I learn more about life and the things that you have to endure and go through in life and the, the struggles of life. And I've learned so much from my peers versus what I've learned from school. Now, of course, I've learned my addition and how to spell and all that basic stuff. But that's it. Yeah. Like half the education that I've that that I've attained from school, it's 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 gone. You said half. <laughs> be, be, I mean, because I, I I've learned how to spell. I mean, I learned how to read. I learned how to do math, addition and subtraction, and all that stuff. But half the crap that we learn, I don't even use. Like algebra. When's the last time you did algebra? As an electrician, I did algebra, but that was a spe- that was a trade specific thing. If I was never an electrician, I never would have used it. You know what I'm saying? As, as a matter of fact, I would say I would say 90%, if not 95% of what we learned is trash. They should they should gear us up. If we're if if you're going to be in a school system, they should gear you up for what you want to do. Because that's the that's the best. Like if you want to just be an electrician and just that's that's your main focus, yes, you should learn those those skills needed in the knowledge. Uh, an experience that goes into being an electrician or if you want to be a science a scientist, if you want to be a, whatever it is that you want to be, that should be your focus because all that other nonsense, it adds nothing, adds no value to your mind, especially if it's not going to be something that you're going to use outside of school. Yeah. I- imagine if at one, OK, <clears throat> you learn your your basic math, your basic, you know, English, and then you start learning everything there is to be about an electrician. You learn how circuits work. You learn how to design them. You learn how to run them. You learn about, you know, the the redundancy systems that are put in for safety protocol. You know electrical work better than the people that wrote the books by the time you're 12. Right. Because that's what would happen if you spent that much time on it. It's ingrained in you, and now you have a skill that will never go away as, as long as we're on this this dumb uh, uh, power system that we currently have, but but here's what here's what happens if you give the, if you give that type of knowledge to children and you don't restrict their learning, they're gonna figure out how to make the system better. Yep, they are. They're very quickly they're gonna figure out. Oh, this is dirty. This is dirty. This is dangerous. There's a much better way to do this. They're gonna start learning how to get you know free energy and you know what I mean. Create systems. Or they're going to learn how to teach people how to create their own ener- energy sources. And now you've lost, oh, my God, like a tremendous amount of control over people. People have to be dependent on the government for food, water uh, and power. So you can't allow a child to freely learn because we will figure it out. They will. The, that's, that, that's a really good point because children's minds, 
they're constantly growing. And when they're at that such a young age, they're not restricted by the beliefs that was placed on them. Exactly. They're not restricted by that. So they're free to do whatever it is and experiment and do whatever it is that they want to do. And teaching a child something that adults learn, teaching them at, at a young age, dude, they will they will like they will technically, I guess, be considered a genius in that field because they because they're exposed to they're exposed to an environment that is typically limited to them based on their age. But if they get exposed to a to an electrician job or a plumbing job or just something that that sparks their creativity, man, they're going to go ham. They're going to go further. They're going to go so much further. So that's why I'm always thinking like, man, once I have a child, <laughs> boy, <laughs> boy, cuz I was listening to this um listening to this audio book by 50 Cent. Uh, it's Hustler, Hustle Hard, uh, Hustle Smart or something like that. It's a really good book. And it just made me think about challenges and fears that are placed on us. And how how um, when a child, they do something, if they hurt themselves or if they, if they get um, scarred or whatever. And their reaction is typically going to be based on the parent so if the parent is going to rush towards this child and be like oh are you okay they're typically going to cry but if you give that child you know what i mean if he falls and does whatever and you just analyze the situation he's going to react he's not going to cry he's not going to whine he's just going to get up and be like all right this is good so it's all about how you approach a situation that's going to determine the outcome. So that's why it's critical to allow things. Don't You don't necessarily have to always be right there in control of the child. Allow them to explore and experience stuff, man. I think that's the beauty of life is, is being able to experience stuff. Yeah, man. Um, you know, also, originally, children, they weren't actually separated into different classes. Oh, yeah, they were with adults and they, older people. They, they were with older people. Yeah. Now, if you once again, going back to observing young children, we're talking infants to five years old. When they interact with older children or adults, especially in that learning, they catch all the way up. Mm -hmm. So far be it from us to allow young children to interact and learn on the same level as older children. Because if you keep doing that, now children are accelerating at a rate that's completely unfathomable, like. You won't be able to control them because they're learning and developing too fast. They'll outthink you at four years old. They can outthink you. Yeah. Because every generation of children that will go through this process will become more intelligent and, and more capable than the last generation. Because, okay, if the first generation of, like, let's say four-year-olds is learning with 10-year-olds, that means that a four-year-old is going to be at a 10-year-old level. But when those four-year-olds become 10, they're going to be far beyond what those 10-year-olds were. So then when the new group of four-year-olds come in and start learning with that group, they're going to catch up to them. Yep. <laughs> right? So now you have, you have, a, you have a generations of children that are so intelligent that, you know, you can't, you can't trick them and say, hey, you have to grow your food like this. They're going to be able to observe nature and be like, well, that doesn't make sense because nature grows food in abundance. So how do we have a food shortage? That doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not even going to be able to begin the process of tricking them and controlling them because they're going to have critical thinking skills that far outweigh the propaganda machine. I think that um, not necessarily children, but when you're younger, or at least I know this is how it was for me. I was naturally attracted to an older individual. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I saw older people and I naturally just gravitated towards them. I was always the youngest within the group. Mm -hmm. I was always the youngest within the group. Even when we were growing up, yeah. me, you, Maine, and all that, I was always the youngest, mm -hmm. you know, and I just naturally gravitated towards y'all. And I think that's just a, I think, I think it's an instinctual thing, mm -hmm. you know, spe especially me since I didn't have like a, a father figure in my life. So I saw someone who had an energy. I think I just naturally attracted to that energy or so. So I feel like if we separate the kids from older people and keep them with people or 
kids that's around their age, we're limiting them. Of course. You know, because you become what you're around. Yeah. If you're around a goo goo gaga boo boo, that's what the babies are going to do when they're around one another. But if you put a child around an intelligent man, an intelligent woman, an intelligent human, they're going to pick up on that stuff because kids are very receptive and their minds are constantly growing. So, yeah, man, I would definitely keep children. I mean, as long as it's not destructive individuals, <laughs> I would keep children around older people because they have that wisdom. They have that knowledge. They have that experience to guide children properly, you know, and. I think about when I was growing up, I'm just like, man, I, I, I was attracted to uh, well, I was following older people, but it, wasn't, it wasn't the best people right. at all times, you know. <laughs> so I was just thinking like we call we, we call, you know, what we put children in, we call them classes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we also know that there's a there's a divide as an adult in, in you know, um, in Ooh, our world, I know where you're going. That that is that is <laughs> our, we're divided by class. Yeah. So once again, it's another parallel between how they prepare us for, you know, what quote unquote the real world through education, but like definition two of class is the system of ordering a society in which people are divided into set based sets based on previous perceived social or economic status. Oh, that's deep. So what they're doing is they're preparing children to be put into different classes because you got to think like the reason we accept classes is because from day one, we were in classes. We I don't even know even, anything else. I never even thought about it like that. But Bruh. yeah, that, that, that's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like though, everything about school is designed to make us the perfect little uh, citizen. It, it makes you feel like you're above. So what class are you in? Hmm. Right. I'm in post-secondary. Hmm. I'm in college prep. I'm in fourth grade. You're in third grade. Right. And there's <laughs> always that thing, especially in like the Japanese culture. Yeah. You know, the upperclassmen are everything. Yeah. They always look down on the ones they that are. They always look down. Yeah. They even do. Yeah. They, you get bullied by first class or uh, what, a ninth year or whatever. Right. They'd right. Like, oh, you're weak or whatever. Right. Wow, exactly. Yeah. yeah, bro. It's it's crazy. The parallels. Um, and it's hard to see this stuff because we just see it as normal. Yeah. But this nothing about our quote unquote evolution is normal. Everything is constructed. There is no reason why at this point in our world, we have not had any real major wars. In, I mean, how long like you, you OK, from from. From a lot of people's standpoints, you know, they might look at the 9-11 and all that stuff as like a real war and whatever. But a lot of that was orchestrated. And, and me personally, I would say that all the wars were orchestrated. The Like the world wars, they're all orchestrated. All the major wars were orchestrated. You think all the major wars were orchestrated? You think, what about every war? No, I'm not going to say every war. But, but every all world the war? major wars, yeah. Where like you um, have... with the, the, the Hiroshima or something like the bombing? Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, they're all orchestrated because you could follow a paper trail. Mm -hmm. Like if if any anybody who looks into those wars critically... And, and not from what we've been taught. Discard everything you've been taught and just look at it critically. You know what I'm saying? Look at the information you've been given. You're going to find holes. The, the information, it, things don't add up. It doesn't make sense. So even now, at what, what, why are we going to war now? We're going to war? No, just in modern times, why, do, why are people going to war it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Every nation has the ability to provide itself with all the resources it needs to thrive outside of trading and anything else that they tell us that we need to do. Every single every single area of land has all the resources for that for those people to survive. Like that, that's not to say that the deaths that had happened in the world in in the war didn't happen no like not, the, the, not the, at all those, those are legit deaths it's just it was a plan put in motion by uh i guess co-conspirators well i mean from from what i can see you know it's it's usually the central banking system that's causing the wars yeah the central banking system manipulates all the wars they're usually funding both sides of the wars you got to think the central banks are everywhere 
There's very few countries where central banks aren't there. So in any countries that are that are having a dispute, the central banks got to fund both sides. Yeah, that makes sense. That's so, sort of like it kind of reminds me of um, what was that Game of Thrones where they were like exchanging money. Is it Game of Thrones? Yeah, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones where they where I guess Littlefoot, he was trying to get money for this war and the bank was like, I'm a side with this. I'm a side with you. But they was also giving money to another uh, faction or mm-hmm. so. So, I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's been happening since. I mean, I know Game of Thrones is a, <laughs> it's a fiction, but it's it's uh, inspired. They have a lot of um, commonalities with things that happen in reality. So I guess that would make sense if the central banking system is playing a major part in these wars since they they stand to gain from it. I think wars. I think wars are part of population control, to be honest. And population control is fucking false. It's not not the not the control, but to say that we're overpopulated. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like is. for people who think that we are overpopulated, they haven't experienced this world, and I haven't no. been everywhere in this world, and I know that th- it's impossible because there's places that where humans aren't even inhabited, yeah. and there's just land, there's just space, land it's plenty of growing. space. Yeah. So Sam, we need population control. We need to make sure we don't have all these people. No. If the thing is like when you think about it, population is c- in control is based on what they want to provide to us. Mm-hmm. So if we're overpopulated and they don't have enough food or resources to give to us, okay, we need to we need to kill or we need to eliminate these people by giving them vaccines, by giving them this toxic food, by giving them all this stuff. But if we look at if if you look at reality in the world that we live in, we have trees, we have forests, we have plants, and we have all these things that nourish us that come from the earth that aren't in populated areas. Mm-hmm. But then what they do, they have billionaires and all these people buy up all this land. They they own this land, so we can't touch that. We can't touch this land right. where these people are saying, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're in control of this. Right. So think of, just think of it, because I, I think I read some on Twitter yesterday where some chick, she was talking about, Eight million people can fit in, uh, I think it was Alaska. Eight million people. If that's how many people are living on this planet. Eight, eight million, billion? Eight, eight billion. Yeah, yeah. Eight billion people. That, that's what she said. But it made me think about like, man, they're, they're really pushing this narrative of uh, overpopulated areas and stuff like that. But this world is so big. Mm-hmm. It's so much bigger than what we know it, know it to be. Even the known world. We could all live in like we could all live in Africa comfortably, like if you know what I'm saying. Like if everybody in the world can can actually like be placed in Texas, right? Then then we could all live in Africa comfortably. Texas is bigger than some countries, <laughs> right? So so I mean, let's be real about it. Population control. I think the wars are part of population control. Um, you get to you get to murder a lot of people in wars and. You have fatherless homes. Yeah. Because the fathers are what's going to protect the home. Right. So now you have fractured homes. You have all these orphans. It's the perfect thing to catapult into certain agendas. So you've got population control, which is is a is a farce. And then you've got climate change, which is a complete farce. And the crazy thing about it is people won't do their they will not do independent research. But this is what going back to what, you know, these school systems are doing. School systems teach you to rely on experts. Mm-hmm. Don't think critically about it yourself. Don't look at the world yourself. Don't do any independent research. There is an expert who's been doing this their entire life. They know better than you. You're dumb. Listen to them. That's what school teaches you. And that's what people do. Anybody who does any independent research outside of the mainstream narrative and propaganda will see that that climate change is farce. It's 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 not even close to the truth. As a matter of fact, the 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 polar ice caps are freezing like it's getting colder. If anything, it's not melting like it's the, the opposite is happening. But this is the beauty of television and but how school. does that narrative start that there's cl- because like if it's winter and it what it's hot outside sometimes or if it's summer, sometimes it's cold. Like, well, where does that spark? Well, that's I mean, you know, NASA, NASA is is dimming the sunlight. So 
Like, man is artificial. Hold on, no. When you say they're dimming the sunlight, what do you mean by that? I mean, they're putting particulates in the air to reflect sunlight. We're getting less, we're getting 30% less sunlight today than we were getting 20 years ago. Okay. Holistically. Because NASA has been spraying the, the atmosphere for decades with, with these particulates that reflect sunlight. And they are, they're what's causing, quote unquote, global warming. They're doing it on purpose. They're creating it. And so that's where the, this is, this is how people can think, oh, it's, it's really happening. Yeah. But it's like, but if you don't look at the picture holistically, yeah, you're going to get, you're going to get, you're going to be confused and trapped. So something is happening. Yes. I'm not saying, and this is the thing. People always think, oh, you're a climate change denier or whatever. No, I just don't believe the narrative that they're spewing. Yeah. I'm not saying that something's not happening, but but the fact that it's happening the way they're saying it is not true. And if you don't do any extra research and you don't see, oh no, there's someone that's doing this, you're never gonna get to the core problem. You're just gonna, they're gonna keep manipulating you. So does it feel like a hopeless situation for those though? Because a lot of people they won't question anything. They just follow the experts and believe the experts. But <laughs> how? How do they how do these, I guess, normal people, normal society, how do they put themselves in a position to not feel like they can do anything? Like, because they, because most people, if, because I'm thinking about just the average dude in the hood. If you, if I was in the hood and you tell me about climate control, I'd be like, what the hell am I going to do about it? Like, what part can I play in this climate control or the, whatever, the ice caps melting or whatever? How, like, how will I even know to know? <laughs> You know, I, I think that, um, you know, or care to know the 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 most dangerous thing that anybody can do is become independent, become an independent thinker, become grow your own food, uh, manufacture your own sources of power and become independent or what, you know, some people say sovereign. It's the most dangerous thing that any of us can do. Also, another very dangerous thing is to do that in a group. So now, not only are you becoming independent, when I say independent, I'm not saying independent of the government. Okay. Right? Not depending on the government. Because the government is our daddy. Yeah. I don't understand how grown men are okay with the government. It's not even a, it's not even a person. It's an entity <laughs> it's an being entity. your it's daddy. Body, yeah. First of all, that should be emasculating. First of all. Second of all, like what man is going to let another man tell you what to do, how to do, when to do? It's just a big prison. You know what I'm saying? Like it's this is crazy. They're going to you're going you as a man, you're going to let another entity control when you eat, what you can eat, what you have access to. That should just rub the the the, the your your core the wrong way. Bro, I don't even <laughs> I don't like following in stool. Well, I I don't oh, like yeah, being You had it right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like being told what the fuck to do. <laughs> Personally, I don't like to do that. So having <laughs> a government or a body tell bro Instant rebel. Why do you think that any time a group of people come together and say, we're going to depart, we're going to detach from the system, they get labeled as a cult, they get labeled as a dictatorship, they get la labeled as crazy, crazy, psycho, you know what I'm saying? He's all, he needs to take his medicine, you know, or they'll, or they'll say they're down there manipulating people, they're people, they're doing all these things so that other people are like, I wouldn't want to be a part of that. That sounds that like. How, how is it that every time anybody has a significant amount of people that detach and go to do their own thing, they get labeled as something negative? I naturally gravitate towards those people. Like, even throughout history, people don't even, like, rock with, like, the, like a John Lennon or, obviously, Kanye, I rock with him, Andrew Tate, or these people with, within our, uh, our society that go against the norm or push back against the agenda anytime like it's it's consistent mm -hmm. it's consistent throughout history the president that was jfk he gets shot yeah but people don't say anything they, they'll 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 have these documentaries of conspiracy theories when this when it's consistent throughout history of anyone who speaks about any of this stuff that goes against the agenda it's constantly pointing the finger saying oh this person's crazy or we're gonna kill him we silence them with murder they can't talk anymore. They can't go against our agenda anymore. We'll label this person crazy. We'll, you know, we'll shun him. We'll blackball him. We'll cancel everything so he doesn't have access to the people. We'll 
block his bank account, will shut off funding and all that stuff just for speaking? Mm -hmm. Sound vibrations? <laughs> Like, my voice is it's vibrating so powerfully that you want to shut me off from the world? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Because I'm going to spark some motivation? Mm -hmm. That's why I was thinking, like, Tupac, I don't think he got killed because it was some kind of gang thing. I think he got killed because of his power, the power in his messaging. Everything that Tupac was talking about, and the reason why Tupac hit, entered my mind is because I've been listening to this audio book, 50 Cent, he mentioned something oh, okay, about, yeah. yeah, he mentioned something about Tupac. And so it got me thinking like, man, Tupac, the message that he was spreading when it comes to young boys and men growing and being, being more um, assertive masculine. and more masculine and stand in their role, that's inspiration. Mm. And he was only 24 when he died. Yeah. 24. Yeah. That is insane. 24, because when I was young, he didn't seem like he was 24. Right, he's right. just, I didn't know his age, but he just seemed like, man, this guy, he's, his wisdom aged him and made him seem like, yo, he's just so much bigger. But when he actually died, 24? Yeah. You know how crazy. young that is? Yeah. How much more life you have to live? Just imagine the energy and the impact that he would have had now if mm. he was still alive, talking and pushing the message that he's pushing now. Imagine if Malcolm X was never murdered or, or Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. Or Nipsey Hussle. Like, oh, Nipsey, that's my like, dude, man. Yeah, imagine if if not just any of them, what if all of them were still alive? Imagine, uh, you know what I'm saying? This is the reason why they get killed. You can't have, you cannot, every single one of these individuals are, are they just, they didn't conform. Mm -hmm. And and their voice, their vibration uh, 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 resonated with a lot of people. So when you have even if somebody is spewing garbage at some point, you still have to you still have to you still have to have a handler there because if any point they start speaking knowledge, it's a problem. So that's why you have a lot of you know famous people with handlers. Knowledge is a very powerful thing, and people underestimate it. Knowledge used in the right hands, application of knowledge, baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? Application of knowledge, you got to apply it in the right direction. So Nipsey, ah. Oh. I remember when he passed. I mean, that that hurt, man. That hurt. I was I, I was out eating, hurting down. I'm just like, man. But there's always because even when he when Nipsey first when Nipsey Hustle when he first got on the scene, he was in the hood, Crenshaw, with his people talking about investing. Yeah. Like who does that when you're in the hood? Only Nipsey. I mean. Like, bro, that is, oh my God. Like, we need powerful minds and people of that, that, that ilk that's built from a certain cloth so we can push the, the narrative of investing in, investing in yourself, becoming a businessman, an entrepreneur, learning how this system works so you can manipulate it in your favor. Because people in the hood, are fucking smart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, they're intelligent. You know why they're so intelligent? They ain't go to school. If you think about the smartest, well, I, I, I'll say for me, the smartest people, the children I knew growing up were the, were the hood dudes. It was the dudes that really wasn't taking it serious. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't really come. And and I used to think, like, dang, this dude, is he's more intelligent than me. I remember being like, how am I getting better grades than him? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because they don't go to school, so they don't get the indoctrination. Man. See, I always think that kind of made me not want to go to school. Like, now. Not yeah, like that's what I'm saying. It made me like think, like, man, I wish I was not in this. <laughs> you know, but it's kind of hard to not be in it when the system is designed to, you know, it's just a it's a, it's a it's Well, cycle. how are you going to get a job? Right. You don't have a high school diploma. Uh-huh. Right? So now you have to get it. But what So there's, there's incentives. Well, yeah, there's incentives. Here's the crazy thing. First, let's start with our parents, though. Our parents, because our parents didn't go to school. Our parents didn't go to college. A lot of us were first-generation college students. So this, the parents got, you know, the propaganda machine got them first. Hey, if you, want, if you want your children to do better than you, they need to go to school. They need to get higher education, and they can get these jobs. They're so much better. First of all, why are we looking for jobs mm -hmm. in the first place? So they've got us hooked on jobs. And now we're looking for the better jobs, which is even just deeper manipulation and control. You know, you, you, you talk to these people who are high up in companies, these C-suite people. They're, they're, 
Their lives, their, their personal lives are terrible. Their family lives are terrible. Like when you really dive into these people's lives, their, their entire life is the job. You know what I'm saying? So many people are unhappy and don't let you be a woman that high up. Uh, oh my God. It's just awful for women. And but yet they're selling us this this idea, like, no, that's what you want. So everyone is trying to get there and ain't they're not gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? People that make it that high up in, in corporate America, they're basically professional athletes. They're basically professional athletes uh, of the the fine of the you know the corporate of the world. corporate world. Yeah. So there's only so many jobs. It's like everybody wants to play in the NBA. There's only so many jobs available. So most of us don't even hit the mark. So it's a perfect it's a perfect outcome because you spend all you get all of the indoctrination, then you have to spend all of this money. You become in debt, and you're a slave to the system. There are people that kill themselves over money, something that's not even real. That's insane. That is wild. Like, people kill themselves over something that's not real? Like, I... When you mentioned that, it made me think that, okay, people who are rich, all they know, or who are born into wealth, they do, they wouldn't know how to survive if they weren't... If they lost all that fortune. That's why a lot of times they commit suicide. Oftentimes, not to say that's everyone, but people who come from the struggle, people who, who start with nothing, let's say they make it to the top and they get all this money and all this stuff and they lose it. They're not going to kill themselves. Why? Because they've already been at the bottom. They know what they need to do in order to make it back to uh, back to the top to get because they have the resources. They have the experience. But on the flip side, someone who's born into that wealth, if they lose everything, all their resources, all their connects, and all that money to keep them stable, they're not going to know what to do. They ain't going to know nothing about making a peanut butter jelly sandwich or uh, surviving off a pack of Rome in a day. Ooh. They ain't going to know about, hey, you know what? I have this. Because it's, it's all about their experience and, and the lifestyle that they come from. That's why a lot of times people at those those high uh, those high marks, they commit suicide. And it made me think uh, also, I did want to talk about the topic of suicide. I've been wanting to talk about that for a while. Because in other countries, well, I know in Canada, they have this thing where it's like an assisted suicide. Where they... I've heard about that. Yeah, where they, like, let's say it's like... Um, person who has cancer or a situation where it just seems hopeless mm -hmm. they basically are legally killing you they're legally they're legally going to kill you or a medically induced death mm -hmm. medical assisted death make sure you you die right yeah i think it's called made or something like that medically assisted something in death okay and so they kill people so do you think that should be a norm because a lot of people are on board with some people are on board with it. I know they do it in other countries, but suicide, they, they frown upon people or they tell people, hey, you shouldn't commit suicide. But they, they even have commercials about, um, you know, hey, if you don't like your life or if you're going through all this, whatever, you can die. We'll kill you. But that's basically what they're saying. We, we will kill you, mm -hmm. you know, but it's it's all it also comes to a point like where where do where do they draw the line? Like, yes, they're only doing it for people who are, you know, they have these sick men, the sicknesses and they can't find any way to to fix it. And just in so much pain that they rather would just die. But there also are, are people who are mentally who may not be going through like a cancer or whatever these super. Um, I don't know the. the uh, whatever disease, uh, ex extreme Udaya disease, but they have these people who are going through mental ailments where they can't control themselves and they just want to c commit suicide. But if you do that, they'll put you in like a, a, a house mm -hmm. or whatever, a crazy house, so you don't kill yourself. So what are your thoughts on them allowing suicide to be, to happen? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm against it. Uh, I cannot I cannot see a perceivable outcome where suicide is your best option, especially considering the fact that, you know, a lot of us, myself included, we don't know what happens after this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, the grass always seems greener on the other side. A lot of people think death is a release. Maybe it is. I would like to tend to, to believe that death is better than 
uh, what we deal with on this this earth. But is it? I don't know. Um, but, you know, it all boils down to this is all manufactured. So my re the reason I'm against it is because it's manufactured from the systems. Nobody would want to commit suicide if we didn't have all of this craziness and nonsense going on in the world. And this stuff is not a natural pro pro uh, progression or evolution of mankind. It's all manufactured. So when I know that, I'm no, I'm not, a, I'm not for it. Like you want to commit suicide because, you know, from the, t from the time that you were born, um, you've been abused, you've dealt with sexual abuse. And then as we got older, you, 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 because that's what you came from, you would continue to attract it. So even in your adult relationships, you're abused and, you know, you have children and, and then the government comes and takes them away from you or whatever. And you, in your mind, your life has just, just been trash. So why would you even want to continue it? Well, all of these things were manufactured. Your life was manufactured to be that way. So of course, you know, the system's going to be like, they create the problem and then they come back with the solution. You know what I mean? Like that's what, that's their big game plan. But I'm like, man, I hope, I hope Jamie Foxx, man. I hope he, I hope he make it out, man. You I know? know? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Cause I think that when, maybe this is just me being super gullible or I don't know. I think when people are in positions like that, they know better. No, no. Like I always think like you're famous, you have all this money, you have these resources and all this. You should know better. They're in, they're in a worse position because you have to think when you have money and resources and you're up there with the elite or what, you know, what your per perceivable elite, um, you think you have the best care. Right. You, yeah. Because, but here's the thing. You might have the best treatment, but that has nothing to do with health. So, no, the best treatment doesn't mean health. There's, you can't, they just, they're apples and oranges. It's not the same thing. So maybe you do have the best treatment. That doesn't mean that you're going to be healthy, right? And this is why you see a lot of these um, high level, you know, entertainers and stuff die early. What are, what's, who's the, who's the high level entertainer that you know that's a hundred years old? The, you know what I'm saying? What's that? The golden girl chick? The girl with the white hair, Betty White. Betty. <laughs> I mean, is she still kicking? No, she died. She died. She off. died. I, I think she died at like ninety-five. Or, I don't. She was pretty old. Yeah, she was old. Okay, that's the only one. But she not really not what I'm talking about. If you if you thought that being having money and resources was like healthier for you in some capacity, whether it was care or whatever, then why aren't we seeing the outcomes? Why aren't we seeing them all centurions, you know, thriving, having, yeah. you know, amazing lives into their hundreds? Always, man. I don't know. I just think they should know better. Because, like, I'll see these celebrities or these people who have all this money. I'm like, man, I wonder if they have holistic doctors or do they even know about a holistic approach to their health? Because I wouldn't think that they wouldn't be knowledgeable about a holistic approach or do they just assume that the medical this medical field is in their best interest look at nick cannon nick cannon has lupus right yeah okay so but nick cannon has resources and knowledge to like eliminate lupus but he still has lupus he's still it's like he's still using mainstream methodology and trying to also like do the health and wellness thing you know what i'm saying you can't serve two masters. And what people try to do is they're like, well, you know, uh, allopathic medicine has its place and blah, 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 blah. But what you don't realize is the same research that is, quote unquote, helping you with your treatment. It's the same research that caused the lupus in the first place. Lupus is not a natural consequence of human evolution or just evolution in general or whatever that might be. It is something that's being done to you. When you go to nature, animals are healthy. The only animals that are sick are animals that come in contact with our chemicals, whether it's our food, whether it's our poisonous water, whether it's our poisonous air. But if you get to go to national parks or places that are more pristine or just places in the world that are more like untouched, yeah. you don't have animals with diabetes and cancer and heart disease and human problems. They just live. Sea turtles and stuff living to be 200 years old, you know, killer whales and stuff like these things live for hundreds of years. So what you're basically saying is that humans 
are the cause of all the destruction that's happening in this I world. I don't see monkeys getting together, taking over civilizations <laughs> and overthrowing dictators and poisoning water supplies. Like, I don't see any other creature on this planet besides human or humanoids that are having any type of negative Im impact. Or creating systems that's going to replace them. <laughs> like, we're creating artificial intelligence that's going to basically set up to uh, basically replace humans. Because they're saying that the, I guess, 300 million jobs are going to be lost because of AI. And that's going to take 300 million. That's a lot of people. Well, what are you setting us up for? Honestly, 15, 15 minute cities. Yeah. Because who, who, who's going to be benefiting from this, these jobs that are lost? It's going to be people in these cities. So guess what? You get to live in this city where the AI and the robots are going to be essentially serving you. But... In order to get this 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 class of attention, you're going to have to live in this 15 minute city, and that 15 minute city is going to essentially turn you into a battery pack, because that's what any that's that's the only thing that these people are trying to do is siphon off our energy, our life force. That's all they're trying to do for whatever reason. I don't know what they do with it, but that's what they've always done. It's literally the Matrix. Are you going to be the protagonist? I'm not, I'm going to go and start my own city. And I'm going to invite as many people to come and partake in that as possible. Like-minded. You, you could say, yes. You could say it's a protagonist. I don't know about all that. If people want to go and put themselves in a 15-minute city prison, I'm not going to try and stop them. But what I'm not going to do is participate. And my family, my lineage is not going to participate. Because at the end of the day, the earth provides everything we need. Mm -hmm. I don't need a government to be my daddy. The earth provides everything. And I love learning high level things like high level knowledge in every aspect. I'm just drawn to it. It's my superpower. So no matter anything I focus my attention on, I figure out like the high level version of it. You know? So that's why I don't deal with tr traditional health care. I deal with the high level wellness. That's going to give me the outcome I want. I don't deal with traditional agriculture. Everything I do in agriculture is against the grain. It's high level. It's less work. It's better output. I'm all about minimum input, maximum output, because they try to teach you that that's not possible. Even when it comes to these over unity devices and things, when it comes to power, they try to tell you, you can't get more out of a system than you put in. So they're basically saying what you get, what you put in is what you're going to get out. But you don't see that in nature. You only see abundance in nature. You only see over unity in nature. If I take a seed and I put one single seed in the ground, it's going to produce Man. tens of seeds. Yeah, That's over unity right there. It's so simple. Nature shows us all the time. That's why I'm always like, there's no such thing as a shortage of food because it's right there. For everything you eat, nature's going to produce 10 to 20 more of it. <laughs> it's an infinite amount. All you... That's what they should teach us in school. Like, if we're going to go to school, we need to learn about farming and planting and reproducing. That's literally the source of life. Everything that that we use and that that, that provides us that sustains our life is being controlled. Mm -hmm. Water, water. All of our water should be clean. <laughs> automatic. We, automatic. We should have to pay for water. Hey, if you don't pay this, water shut off. Why? Who the fuck are you to tell me I can't drink water? Crazy. Like, that is insane. We could literally build our houses. In a modern world, we could build our houses to collect and filter water. You don't even need to be on a water supply. You wouldn't even need to drill in certain areas. You wouldn't even need a well. You could literally just collect the water from, from the sky, and your system just recycles that water. We could build those systems easily. <laughs> but they have certain laws that, hey, if you collect water, hey, Brad, we coming for you. If you, if you try to do anything, even throughout history, people who uh, have cars that's built on water and all that stuff. Oh, we're going to execute this guy. You know, this is not under our control. If, it, if it's not with, within the system's control, it's going to be an execution. It's going to be a plan to take it over. That's wild to think that we have to pay for water. We have to pay 
to to get to live to, to live that's water is Li- literally pay to live but instead we will we'll receive all this unnatural food that's poison to us mm. that's poison to us and i was at the gym yesterday and i saw this chick mm. she was nice yeah mm-hmm. i mean like as soon as i walked in the gym i went in later than i typically do maybe like a couple hours later i was like okay let me walk in i walked in she was wearing orange had nice mm. stacked Brick house, you know what I mean? And I was actually waiting for an opportunity to talk, but never came. She was working out, I was working out, and I think I waited out too long. If I would have waited too long, we would have left at the same time. That would have been perfect. But she had a Chick fil A cup, <laughs> and she had a Chick fil A cup, and I was just, it made me think like, man, she has this nice body. She's pretty. She's, you know, obviously she's a little younger. <sighs> How could I, like, if I was to talk to her, mm-hmm. how could I make her not eat fast food? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because I don't want to control anyone, you know, because people think that what they're doing is always right. But she has this, she's at the gym, she's working out, but she's drinking water from a Chick fil A cup. Obviously, she's eating fast food. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, like, someone like that who looks nice, is it possible? <laughs> To get them out of this fast food thing, or would you even date a chick who eats fast food? I mean, it seems pretty easy when it comes from the man. So, like, naturally, women want to follow the lead of a man. So there is that that you know, there's nature helps us out there. Um, I have dated girls when I very first started fasting. I mean, I remember one girl specifically. I didn't prompt her. I mean, I was still learning and growing. She went and bought fasting books and started fasting. We were just dating. We weren't even in a relationship. So, and and she went to the gym. She cared about her health. I think people care about their health more than what society will lead you to believe. Because look at how many, look at these gyms. They're thriving. People think that going to the gym or having a gym membership is going to help keep them healthy. That's, that's a good why point. They, that's a good point. That's why they do it. So it's not that people don't care about their health. It's that they don't know how to adequately support their health because of the healthcare system. So the healthcare system, I mean, look at the food pyramid. It's absolute garbage. Something recently on Joe Rogan, some clip came out where they were saying that the gov- there's a there's an agency or something some healthcare system that is supporting the idea that Lucky Charms is healthier than like steak or broccoli or whatever. Bro, it's in Hey, Lucky Charm? Lucky Charm. I mean, when I was younger, I used to rock with Lucky Charm. I mean, yeah. Hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cinnamon Toast hey, Crunch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get them honey, them frosty honey, that Cheerios. Yeah. All that. Yeah. Reese Puffs. I love Reese Puffs back in the day. Yeah, those are all Comp- Captain Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's crazy because when we when our food pyramid when our food pyramid came out, it was it was messed up. Like it was it was wrong then. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, of course, the food pyramid has gotten better. It, ha- since it then. has. To, it has to have. And it's literally just gotten worse. Insane. And it's like it's so. So those are the, the, the those are the systems and things that we're trusting to teach us and educate us. And that's the reason why we're sick. Because guess what? People are out there doing it. When the obesity epidemic first started, people started going to the gym. They stopped eating butter. They, they were doing what the government was telling them. It just made them sicker because that was the whole plan. But people did it. So, yeah, I think it's easy to uh, program someone back to something that's natural because it's what we... Nobody wants to die early. Yeah. Like, nobody wants to be sick and unhealthy. They just... The thing is, they need... Sometimes people need motivation. Once again, this is easier for women. Every, now, I have a certain personality... You know, I'm, I am a leader. You know, when women get with me, they see me that way. It's just you, you exude confidence and, you know, you, you, you act like you know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, whether you do or not, you just, you act like it. And women want to follow that. Because you're confident yeah. in the information that you're talking about. So I've always been able to influence women I've dated very, fairly easily, uh, especially if it was anything serious. Um, yeah, I guess that makes sense because a lot of relationships that I've been in, I've, I didn't necessarily make everyone go vegan, like you're a vegan, you know, but I've definitely changed or influenced their, their behavior when it, when it came to a lot of things they ate. 
because they see me. I don't eat fast food and I don't eat anything bad or anything like they would probably joke on me like, oh, he can't eat anything. I remember you used to make jokes about you eating rabbit food. Yeah, definitely did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but who's the rabbit now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the rabbit now, Chris? <laughs> so, yeah, I could definitely see that. But I just saw her. I'm just like, man, she looked nice. But she eating a damn Chick-fil-A. Yeah, well, anything to. <laughs> Anything to make things more difficult, right? No, 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 no. Just you know, it was it was just a situation where it made me think about that. But she's uh well, it also made me there. There was this um, something else that I learned about this those chemicals um, that when kids eat those, I guess suckers or whatever that dum dums dum dums to suckers the lollipop dum dums. Oh, that's what they call. <laughs> No, I never knew that. Oh, dum dums! <laughs> They're called dum dums. It's literally it, it, making it, you a dum dum. It, it, it all. It literally. It literally make you a dum dum. They're literally making fun. Of you. <laughs> but they have those, those that leave stains and stuff on your tongue. Mm -hmm. Those are bad. Oh yeah. That's that that those are horrible for you. Mm -hmm. You know, because it made me think about when when I think it was Anthony get that cake for us. <laughs> and it was years ago. Okay. It, it was like a dye, color dye or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when I was pooping, it made my poop like yeah. literally, mm -hmm. literally green. Yeah. Literally green. Like green, green. Like green ranger green. You yeah. know, an unnatural green. Mm -hmm. Those are bad. Yeah. Those are horrible. And you see all like all the toxins and stuff. Like even when you eat cereal, like the Captain Crunch, mm -hmm. it turns your milk that particular color. Those are all chemicals. Mm -hmm. Those are all chemicals. It's not good for you. It's not something that we should be ingesting or digesting or putting within our in our body right. and it made me think like how is those chemicals lasting are those effect, are those still playing a role in us now because we haven't detoxified or is it just in this particular moment it's going to cause a situation but then go away bro there's these things called forever chemicals forever chemicals yes because they never leave your system uh, these are very common in vaccines, but they're extremely common in everyday products. This is why when I uh, when I when when I talk to people, I do my best to explain there's a difference between like changing over a new leaf and eating healthy and detoxing. There's two different things. Is there a level of detox that happens when you start eating plant based or whatever? Yes, but that's not the same as actively saying I'm going to cleanse my liver. I'm going to cleanse my kidneys. Or, I'm going to go on a detox. If because these forever chemicals are designed to stay in you, heavy metals being one of the most prominent that most people are familiar with, you do not properly excrete heavy metals. That's why they put heavy metals in everything. It's in cornflakes. It's in, you know, bread and every, everything. Um, the, the, the dirt has lead in it like it's in everything as much as they can get it. It's in the air. So it's in the water so that you can take it in and then your body will essentially build up you know, th this uh, calcium or whatever, it'll basically start to seize up. Think about it. Like, what is killing people? Like, what is actually death? Even, quote unquote, death by natural causes. If you really start thinking about it, you're, you're, if, if you look at your body as a machine, you know, like an electrical machine or whatever, the parts are seizing up. When your heart stops, it's your, your heart seized up. Mm. It's not getting lubricant or it's not getting its electrical charge. It's no different from a car. If you keep putting gunk in your oil line you know, or your coolant system, the parts associated with those are going to seize up and they're going to stop functioning. So the more gunk and, and, and material and chemicals you can get in someone's system, eventually it's going to seize it up. And that's when you die. We don't die of old age. No. We die because something fails in our because body. Because our, well, our body part fails. Yeah, a heart, a liver. A lung. A lung. Yeah, whatever it is. Because I, I think I was listening to Yaki yesterday, and he was talking about how our DNA is, you know, it's, it's how it's built. And over time, we, we basically deteriorate. Deteriorate. Did I say that right? Yeah. Deteriorate. Yeah, we deteriorate <laughs> <laughs> because of the things that we're putting in our systems, in our DNA. And it's literally, it shows like the image of it breaking down our DNA because we have DNA all on. Our entire body is made up of DNA, uh, dioxa something, nucleic acid, you know? Um, Good job, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'd be having them words, man. I'd be like, oh, okay. But yeah, man, it made me think like, man, because. When, when people die of 
old age. That's what they say. Oh, they died a natural death. He died peacefully. Like, no, he died because his heart stopped and there was something happening that he didn't, that, that was not properly functioning because of something that's in his system. Right. Because we're not meant to die as, as early as we have been dying. Not even close. You know, so because like the norm of life expectancy, it's like 70, 80 years. Yep. That's the norm. I'm just like, what? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to be dying that early. You know, not, not, if it, not if it's within my control. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to allow myself to just die. Now, if I get, you know, if I get hit by a train or something like that, which, <laughs> I know it's pretty extreme, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to put myself naturally in situations where I'm going, going to die. That's why I always talk about living life long and eating healthy and because um, we are what we eat. Mm -hmm. We literally, we're, we are literally what we eat. And it's funny be, because before even I learned about the health field and the, and the knowledge that I have now, I literally would look at people, just look at people and be like, they eat a lot of pork mm. because they would have features that resembles a pig. Wow. They would have features that are big and they resemble a pig. Like I would look at some of my cousins and I'd be like, oh, they're killing pork. Mm. They're killing pork. They would literally look like what they're eating. Yeah. You know? And it also made me think, like, hmm, black people like eat a lot of chicken. Chickens don't have a lot of uh, big legs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, hey, maybe we got skinny legs because we eat a lot of chicken. I don't know. Maybe so, <laughs> you man. know, maybe so. But we're literally a reflection of what we eat. Everything that we put in our system, it becomes us. And it made me think of cell. <laughs> it made me think of perfect cell, you know, because he was imperfect until he got all these androids. Because this, this is what he was meant in order to, this is what he was uh, able to eat. To reach his final form. And it also, do my mind be going. Like, it made me think that we are like cell in a sense is that we absorb every, we become everything that we take in. Because if you think of cell, he had everything from Goku's abilities, Piccolo's abilities, everyone's abilities all within him. And even when he died after he uh, did the self destruction on, uh, on Goku and he came back. He had Goku's power. He had his ability mm -hmm. because he absorbed whatever it is, the experience that he had. He, oh, he, now he can do the instant transmission now. So it was just like, okay. It made me think like, man, in a sense, we are like Cell as, as, we, as, as we evolve. We, we just, you know, we pick up everything that we learn. I know how my mind just goes to anime, but I just think about all this stuff and we're influenced by our environment and... We need to be more conscious of that and being around people and being around environments that are toxic is ultimately going. It's ultimately going to not be in our best interest, you know, so eat healthy foods, get rid of that BS that you're putting in your body and learn better. Think for yourself, open your mind, be more receptive and more open to ideas that challenge whatever you think, because as I'm on this health journey, I'm just saying, like, man, there's a lot of people out here that's going through it, man. Like, a lot of people that I think is, oh, they, they're good. But then they start posting stuff. I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers. Is, like, they, they're going through it, man. Mm -hmm. They're going through it. Any closing words? Yeah, it's been a lot of stuff on my mind lately. Um, I think as I, as I kind of transition into my new reality, uh, because we have the ability to control our reality. And, you know, a lot of things have been frustrating me lately, um, mainly because as I start learning how easy it is to live a better life, it becomes more frustrating to see so many people in pain and depressed and all of that stuff. Uh, I would just say that, you know, you have to believe that you're in control of your own reality. Like if you don't believe that you're in control of your own reality, then you don't have a choice but to give it to somebody else. And that somebody else is going to be an entity or a power structure that doesn't have your best interest at heart. So it, it would be in your best interest, it would behoove you to start believing that you have control of your own reality. Stop allowing, you know, one of the things that Rockefeller did, he did a lot of very evil genius things. But one of the things he did was he imparted these um, sayings into our uh into our our, our language language our system so that we would negatively reinforce ourselves without even really realizing it 
stuff that like, you know, it seems like that would make sense, but ultimately is negative reinforcement. So we, we have all these negative thoughts and then we wonder why we get negative outcomes, but because you guys can build your own realities. Uh, my life is vastly different from 99% of people that I see because I don't, I think I actively work towards positive thoughts. Um, I, I constantly look to apply new knowledge that I learn. I don't look at knowledge as entertainment. It's like, what can we do with this knowledge to make our life better? And on a very low level, because I'm not anywhere near where I could be, mm. on a very low level, I'm able to have outcomes that people can only dream of. Like, you know, drive whatever car that I want, um, create whatever type of future that I want. Like, I'm not special, you know, like, and also seems like everybody around me who has that similar mindset is also able to do it. So it's duplicatable. What are we all just special and lucky? And most of us came from the hood or from the dirty South. Like none of us were privileged growing up. So if we could do it literally, yeah, anyone can do it. Um, so yeah, stop making excuses. You, you control your reality. Whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, uh, <laughs> there's, you know, when you mention that, that makes sense because there's, this, there's someone that I'm speaking with and they say they want to be an actor, mm -hmm. an actor. And every time I talk to them, I'm like, okay, so what did you do today that has to do with, do with acting? Like, mm -hmm. what did you do today? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. And to me, like, this person wants to talk on the phone all the time. And I'm like, I don't have time to be talking on the phone like that. I said, every now and then, cool, but just text me because a lot of times I can't give my attention to a, a two, three-hour conversation. Right. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I say it's not realistic to my goals. And I tell them up front. Up front, I'd be like, I put me before you. Mm. I said, I am a priority. The things that I want to accomplish and the things that I'm going to accomplish, I said, this is a priority to me. I said, this isn't just killing time or just, just happening. No, I am actively doing things and setting up my routine so I can get the results that I want. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I know I'm much older than you. I said, but what, you're, you're 27? I said, you want to be an actor? Then you should be work. You should be doing something every single day that's pushing you towards being an actor. Yeah. But you aren't doing anything, and I shouldn't be. I sh you shouldn't be. She shouldn't be upset, or she shouldn't take offense to it. No. You know, if it's something that you say you want to do, mm -hmm. like okay, you got a new job. Okay. You got a new job. Start your new job. What are you doing after work? Right. What are you doing after you get off the clock? Oh, yeah, I'm tired. Then I say, you don't want to be a fucking actor then. Right. This isn't what you want to do. You do not want to do these things if you're going to make up an excuse for a reason why you're not doing something. If you want to spend your life um, working for someone, that's fine. That's what you want to do. But don't say you want to be an actor or an actress or whatever it is if you're not actively doing things that's going to put you in a position to do what you say you're passionate about and that's your dream. Mm -hmm. But then she said, oh, I have, I have so many things that I like to do. I like to do this and this and this. I said, I do too. I said, but you need focus. Mm. You need focus. I said, trust me. I'm speaking from experience. All these, all these things that you have an interest in, you, uh, you you're interest, you, uh, you're an um, electrician, you're not you, but her, but you're, you're an electrician, you have experience in all this, uh, art, drawing, all these things that you're good at, what are you doing with them? Mm -hmm. You need focus. And then once you focus on this one thing, all those other, all, all those other avenues are going to open up for you. Right. You know? But me saying that is, is not, it's not going to hit the same. So I'll, I, and I, I tell, I'll be like, look, and I said, I understand where you're coming from. And I understand your perspective because I was there. I'm exact. I'm exactly where you're there. So I'm telling you this because I'm coming from experience and you have all these interests, but you have no focus, but it's hard to allow someone to see that they just need to focus on this one thing. And you're a grown woman. You're a grown woman. Like you shouldn't deter, you shouldn't discourage yourself from pursuing something that you say you're passionate about, you know, and I shouldn't be more passionate about something that you say you're passionate about. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, 
Yeah, man, I'm with you when it comes to having that focus and, um, you know, staying around an environment of people who have that exact same energy because you'll get that result. It'll rub off on you it naturally. It has to. It, it's just natural. Yeah. It's part of who we are. We become who we are. If you put fleas in a freaking jar, they and they're around these other fleas, they're going to acquiesce to their environment. They're going to learn from their environment. And then when you take that lid off, they're not going to go above that because that's all they know. Right. If you tie a baby elephant, if you tie a baby elephant to a tree, he can't get out of that tree because, oh, I gave up and I tried. He gets older. He has enough strength to pull that tree out. But he's learned from his environment, that if he continues to try, he won't be able to do it. So don't even try. Mm -hmm. Don't even put himself in a position to try. So get around people who are excelling, who are doing better than you, who are, who are more knowledgeable, and then understand and learn from them. Don't take offense to people who are more knowledgeable than, to you, uh, more knowledgeable than you. Be receptive. Be receptive and open your mind to things that's going to push you to grow. It's a blessing. It really is a blessing, man. That's why I'm grateful to have people like you in my life. Like, I, I, dude, I'm... <laughs> I was, <laughs> I'll say it before another podcast, but <laughs> I was thinking, because th I'm going to talk about it in the retreat, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about it here. But I was thinking about a lot of situations like, man, if, if I wasn't in this, blah, blah, blah. but yeah, man. Mm. All right. Uh, all right. This has been a beautiful episode. We didn't talk, uh, I mean, we, we didn't talk too crazy, right? We, we, we was pretty sane, right? You know, it's just like Steven's not even gone, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, Steven. Hey, man, you a pineapple right now, but hey, you're going to turn back. Uh, I think you're going to turn back next week, man. I think you're going to turn back next week, man. So, um, yeah, man, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave some thoughts, leave some comments and all that stuff if you have any questions. And, yeah, man, we'll get to them. Chris James, Animated Male, Pineapple, and we will see you all next time. Peace and love.